All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Texas Chainsaw Massacre video. The game comes out in 15 days. Super excited about it. Um, also, just want to say thank you so much for 200,000 views, my most viewed video um, on YouTube, for the grandpa stabbing video. My final recording of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game playtest. It just turned out fantastic. So thank you guys a lot for that. Thanks for all the new subs. Definitely check out my channel again in 15 days when the game finally fully releases everywhere. I'll be doing gameplay videos, breakdowns of builds and different things like that. But yeah, they streamed and for an hour. I reacted to the entire thing. As you can see, this is my recording here. My face cam is like doubled because my face cam is over my face cam right now. Kind of weird. But yeah, I reacted to the whole thing. Um, I don't think I'll post it because we didn't learn too much new information. It was fun seeing the devs and their Texas Chainsaw basement and all that. And there was some good questions asked and answered but still not too much that I actually reacted to. Not too, not too interesting to watch if you've already seen the stream when I could just break down the key things here because I've already had a meta game breakdown video before in the past. And I feel like that does a perfect job at already breaking it all down. Nothing new was really learned in this stream. This was just a breakdown for the people that didn't read the posts before and that didn't know a lot about the game. But yeah, there is just like one or two maybe things that you can learn from this video here that if you've already watched my metagame breakdown video before that are going to be new to you. So anyways, let's hop into it and I'll just go through it really quickly. So every character has a special ability, right? Connie, for example, we're in her focused skill tree. Her ability is called focused. It's this icon right here. It makes it so that she can instantly, she can press a button and it instantly breaks a lock. It was a very powerful ability in the tech test. I'm guessing it's going to remain mostly the same, but in people's ability skill trees here, we know about the different branching paths. So for example, she goes over to the left here and that gives you the level one. So this is level one, all this row is level one, level two and level three. You get to pick a level one thing, a level two thing and a level three thing. The top row is always the best. It has like the best attributes, best timers, all that stuff. So let's go through this really quickly. So you have the base ability here and then you have the level one from the left side which reduces the ability recharge time to 220 seconds. You can go all on this path up here and get a super reduced um, ability time, or you can spread it out and get different effects with your ability. So then they go to the level two section over here in the middle, because this path, you can't go to the far right if you already are on the left. You can either go up or to the right here. So yeah, they went to the left and then the right, which is their level two thing. They got stamina consumed while activating focused ability is reduced by 35%. And does not stack so that does not stack thing is kind of weird because if you do choose the middle one and then go straight up isn't this one also a stamina reducing thing maybe it is maybe it's not and then they chose to go to the left path over here which will reduce the ability recharge time to 180 seconds from 220 so minus 40 extra seconds and if they chose the middle one and went all on the left side i wonder what that would be like maybe a the ability would be 120 seconds in total. But yeah, that's the basic breakdown of this. Um, I think this middle one makes it so that you don't run out of stamina at all. So these top ones do have great effects. And we're going to see even more when the game fully comes out. Like when Leland's shoulder charges, what is that going to give him in the top section of these? We don't know yet, but I'm guessing we're going to be able to do some pretty cool things. So this is called the star sign system, which is the star sign is everybody's ability, basically their special ability and you can respect this at any time and yeah but then we have the actual skill trees for characters so as we can see here we have 150 skill tree points and skill tree points are earned i'm pretty sure just by playing that single character but it's weird i, I would feel like skill tree points are earned from like you could play leatherface and use all those skill tree points that you earn from him on connie if you want but that's not the case apparently the weird thing is is that once you go on Connie's skill tree here and grab attribute points, these attribute points can be used on any character. So that's a little weird, but yeah, their community hub post says attribute points can be used on any characters, skill tree points cannot. So I find that very weird and kind of backwards. And I, I'm wondering if they made a mistake on their part saying that or not, but apparently this is how it is. So I'm just letting you guys know. So as you can see, Connie is level zero right here, but once you put all 50 um, skill tree points into her, she will be level 10 and that is the max level. So to max someone out, you need 50 skill tree points. So yeah, you start down here and then you can choose a 
branched path is what it's called. In this dev video, they choose the left side and that goes all the way up. All 50 points can be spent until you reach a perk at the top. But yeah, everything is fogged out in these paths, but since they're choosing the left side, it starts growing. Um, they don't know what's in these other paths, but at any time again, you got the respect button right here. You can press it and go check what the other sides have. And once you check that side, the fog is opened up and you know what's there permanently. You don't have to re like respec again and check the sides. I also find this system kind of weird because it's just like you have to level up a character. You basically have to go through their skill tree three different times if you want to fully know what's there, which I find weird. It's just time consuming, I feel like, because you have to hold on every node. Just hold the button, gain the node, gain it, gain it all 50 times, then respec, do it again for the middle row, respec, do it again for the right row, and then you'll finally know what everything is there. But then there's also branches on the branches, so you might want to go in other paths, but I'm pretty sure you can see those. But yeah, for these first main three branches, you have to go all on one side, 50 points, respec, do it again just to check what's on the other sides. So I feel like that's going to be very time consuming and that's just for one singular character. So I don't know if they're going to eventually change that or if it's going to get annoying for players. We will see when the full game releases. But while we're here, let's check out some of these perks. This one is Sanguine Shadow. I don't exactly know how you say that. Sang Sanguine Shadow. It costs two skill tree points to use or to gain. But yeah, let's just read it really quick. So level one, if you drop below 30% health, it can be refilled slowly by staying hidden and motionless in shadows or hiding spots. Health increased is incre or health received is one HP per second, up to a maximum of 30% of your total HP. And yeah, so you'll always get the level one perk right away for the character, but then perks have their own XP. So as you use that perk in a match, you'll be able to get XP for that perk and level it up all the way down to level three, which will be the best version of that perk and you'll always have that on after that and since you're leveling this up in connie's skill tree i don't think that perk goes to other characters i think they have to choose their own perks in their own skill tree maybe if it does go on other characters then i'm going to be very confused about how we're going to respec characters to like to see perks on other characters if that makes sense because if you go that down this whole left path you're missing out on these perks for other characters, like this one right here, you're gonna have to go swap over to Connie really quick, unspec her, go on this path to get those characters, switch back to Leland, and then you can finally use those perks on Leland. I don't think that's gonna be how it works. That'd be very annoying. So I'm pretty sure once you unlock these perks on this character, it's only gonna be for this character. But I don't know, we're gonna have to wait for the full game because things are still a little confusing. They like really spent a lot of time an hour on this stuff, breaking it down, but still some things they didn't talk about clearly. And we were able to ask questions in the chat but not all of them are answered. We also don't know how long it's gonna to take to get those 50 skill points on certain characters to fully level them up. But yeah, as you gain XP for this perk by using it a lot, you'll get the second version and then there's a the third version. I don't know what the third version is, but this one, if you drop below 45% health and then you know you hide in, in shadows and stuff, you gain one HP per second up to a maximum of 45, it says. And I'm guessing the other one is probably like 60, maybe even 75% health. But yeah, it seems like a pretty nice perk. But yeah, as they go through, these all these star icons are attribute points. You'll be able to use that on your character. You have 30 of them max. And each character, like for example, Connie might start out with, she might be a character that has like two stealth. You can put a bunch of points in her stealth section, a bunch of attribute points and make her an actual good stealthy character. So yeah, that's what these star icons are, which most of the skill tree is filled with attribute points. And if there are more than 30, then that actually makes sense as to why you can use those attribute points on other characters as well. Here is another perk here, Twinkle Toes. Maybe an Avatar The Last Airbender Toph reference, probably not. Anyways, level one. So yeah, you can see the XP bar right here. It's very tiny, but you need 3,200 XP with this perk to level up to level two. But the level one version, you have a 25% chance to not trigger bone charms. And then all the way up to level three, you have a 75% chance not to trigger bone charms. This seems a little useless to me. Um, oh yeah, and it says, while also completely avoiding chickens. So that's kind of good. So the level three version of the perk might have even greater abilities to them. But yeah, as you can see from this node all the way down over here to down here, this node, they've put in 12 attribute points. Once they put in another two, they'll become a level four Connie. Once you put in all 50, you'll be a level 10 maxed out Connie. But yeah, that is the perk Twinkle Toes. 
Let's see the next one. I haven't read these, by the way. Even when I watched the live stream, I didn't read them. Um, level one, let's just read the level three version. Grant, because that's once you get enough XP, that's the version everyone's going to be using. Level three, grandpa is 100% less alerted by the noises you make during the start of the game. Don't know how long the start of the game is. Maybe it's until, probably, yeah, until the basement opens. So you can run around, rummage everything. You won't wake up grandpa and unlock the basement doors. That's pretty cool. Sneaky Pete, another perk for the stealth section. And also, I don't think these matter at all. It being a stealth perk. I don't think you have a certain section of perks that you put on. I think it's just whatever you want. But it seems like this whole path is about stealth almost. Like this whole branched path that they chose is all pink perks, which corresponds to stealth gameplay. So level three, your stealth is increased by seven. So you just gain like an extra seven stealth attribute points when you put this perk on. And then you could still have your 30 attribute points to put elsewhere. So that's kind of nice. That perk is basically just bonus attribute points. Eventually you'll come across these random nodes with a, a thing like this. You're not going to be able to go into the other branches with this character after you choose this branch. So are you going to be stuck with just these perks on this branch and someone else could have something completely different? We don't know. We got to wait for the full game. So a lot of things are kind of are still unanswered. Um, the, the skill tree is just a little weird to me right now. I'm sure it makes sense in the long run and everyone will have all the same stuff. Awards a random perks. And this one gave them a jack in the box, which is a strength perk. So it can give you perks from other sections, I guess. Or this is just a weird coincidence that all the below ones are stealth. But yeah, so the level three version of this, when leaving a hiding spot, you take 35% less damage for 11 seconds. So you can just quickly, uh, not so quickly, the animations are kind of long in this game, but semi quickly, maybe hop in a locker or something. There's not really lockers, but you know, the mini fridges and all that stuff. Or there are lockers too, whatever. You can hop in those, quickly hop out. And for the next 11 seconds, if you get attacked, 35% less damage taken. So kind of okay. I don't know if that's going to be a very popular one or not. Seems very hard to pull off, I feel like. Here's another one. They can choose either a branched path in this way or that way. They both have a ton of attribute points, but different perks for your character. This one is a proficiency perk, Efficient Locksmith. Level 3, when unlocking doors, there is a 40% chance to the, the unlock tool won't be consumed. Also, sorry that there's two of me on the screen. But yeah, seems like an okay perk, 40% chance, pretty, pretty good. Being able to use that a second time is kind of insane, actually. Or you can go on this path and get Pick on Me, proficiency perk. We don't know the level 3 version, but level 2 at least, while using an unlock tool, the door or gate you are attempting to open will be highlighted for all victims. The effect will last 20 seconds. Also very nice, especially for solo queue. Yeah, so I can unlock maybe the exit, the exit area, and everyone will see it for 20 seconds. There's also already a perk that highlights the exits for you when they're open, so that could also be very useful, but this could be useful for any basement door, anything like that. Another perk, Jump Scare, an endurance perk. Level 3, triggering bone charms and chickens increase your sprint speed by 10% for 12 seconds. All of these are 10%, it's just dependent on how much time you get. But that could be pretty good. You do trigger a lot of chickens and bone charms when just running from the family. But getting that extra 10% speed for a couple seconds every time you hit a bone charm actually might be pretty useful. Another stealth perk here, a rally leader. Level 3, help all victims recover from being incapacitated more quickly recovery is 35% faster. So just a very nice, um, I don't know why it's a stealth perk. It doesn't say more quietly or anything. It says more quickly. So I don't know. But yeah, I guess when they're, when people are downed, you'll just heal them 35% faster. Another perk here, Saboteur, level three, after using a generator or fuse box, the interaction cooldown for family members is 30 seconds longer. That's going to be pretty annoying. I think a lot of people might be using that just because um, there are times where you can turn off the generator for the cattle grid at the end of the, the map, but the family can run to it quick enough. Sometimes it's very rare before like everybody gets out. This will make it take 30% longer or 30 seconds longer. I mean, which is even greater than 30%. 30 seconds longer is a long time. So that is actually a pretty good perk. And lastly, at the top of her skill tree, as you can see, she has one more point to spend before she becomes level 10. It says 49 out of 50 skill tree points spent. So she can either get another attribute point over here or another one over here. Don't know why it's two different paths, but whatever. Maybe even you can get both. I don't really know. But choose flight perk. Level three, fight or flight, choose flight. Once depleted, your stamina bar will instantly refill and you have three charges of it. So 
That's kind of insane. I feel like that is probably one of the best perks in the game so far that I've seen. You're running from the family instead of, you know, staggering because you're out of stamina. You just recharge it fully. And that can happen three different times, which you you would really only need that to happen once in a game to guarantee a win. Three times is nuts. And yeah, comparing their, their skill points from the beginning to the end of the skill tree, they ended up with a 99 points by the end. They started with 150, so it does take 51 points to level up a character fully. Also, a little sneak peek, we do get to see a couple cosmetics here. They look like mostly recolors. Actually, they are just recolors. They're the same exact outfits, but there's a second page of them. Right up here, this is how many loadout slots you have. You have up to five, which you have multiple loadout slots, like in DBD, for example, but I don't use those because most of the time I'll just take off a perk and put on another one. It doesn't really matter too much. In this game, it seems like it does matter because 30 attribute points, respecting that all the time, dragging toughness down, strength up by two points, proficiency up by 10 points, stealth up by eight points, doing all that constantly is kind of annoying, but making it like a stealth build where that's full, you have five loadout classes to do that. So you can have, you might actually be using the loadout class system in this game. And then of course they have their star sign ability here, and then three perks picked out. For the family members, they'll have their ability here, which also has the skill tree path that we went over in the beginning, that they could choose a level one, level two, and level three item. There are three perks, and then they'll also have a slot for a grandpa perk, and a slot in the middle, right where my mouse is, for an execution. So they can choose a certain Mori or whatever. But yeah, it seems like Connie without any of her 30 attribute points on, uh, as you can see, plus zero on all these, she doesn't put any in. She starts with 20 toughness, 25 endurance, 15 uh, strength, 35 proficiency, and 30 stealth. Also, they did confirm only one character uh, can be in each match. You can only have one Connie on a team. Um, of course, one Hitchhiker, one Leatherface. You always have to have a Leatherface in the match, though. So if a lot of people don't want to play Leatherface, queue times are going to be very long. And yeah, it seems like in the hub post and everything, they did get it backwards. Because as you can see here, they have 99 extra skill tree points here, so they can put that on any other character. They say in the post though, attribute points are the things that you put on other characters, which wouldn't make any sense. So I think I am right about that. I think they got it backwards and they messed up. I don't know. Even in the stream, they said the same thing. So I don't know. I feel like I'm my idea works better for the game, but maybe not. Anyways, they do have 99 extra points up here. Don't know how else they would use those, so it has to be able to go on other characters, even though they say it doesn't. And we have gone over this perk in the past, Intuition, but I'll just read it again. Holding a key item, a fuse or a valve, highlights the location it can be used at for 100 seconds. So that was what was in the playtest, because they just wanted people to know where things were most of the time. So if you do find a valve, you'll know exactly where to go to place it, so that you can open and exit gate. Very useful, that's going to be nice on uh, for new players. And as we can see here, very interesting, um, this is the perk screen. So they clicked on intuition, they're going to replace it with something else. This is what it looks like. Again, perks are color coded. I think orange was strength, pink was stealth, purple is proficiency, um, green looks like it's uh, endurance, I think. Yeah, I think it's color coded with what's here, your stats, or you can't even see, but anyways, color coded with that stuff. This is strange to me because up here it says there's two pages, right? There's the all section. Or are you just at all perks? Uh, are these down here filters that you put on? Or are there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages of perks? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's 25 per page, except this slot's empty. Basically, you know, 25 per page. 25 times seven. Are there that many perks in the game? I don't think so. I think there's just two pages of perks here. I don't know why what these dots at the bottom are. I'm a little confused. I don't know. I think it's just because it's an early build. Maybe that's just there. I don't know. Just speculating about stuff. Maybe there are seven pages of perks. Also right here, I think we already know about all this because we've read about it before, but toughness, it says toughness influences the victim's survivability rate, determining maximum health and incapa incapacitation recovery time. So that is good to know about toughness. Strength affects how long family members are stunned from sneak attacks. Over so we'll be leveling that up for grandpa, of course. Overall grappling effectiveness and the difficulty of performing tasks such as opening crawl spaces or disabling generators. 
So all these are all very, very good to level up, but you only have 30 points to put into them. And then they go back to the skill tree, they respec it and go up the middle tab here. So we do get a new perk, Lucky Lock Picker, a proficiency perk. The very first time you use an unlock tool to open a door, it has a 50% chance to not be consumed, which I'm gonna have to go back in the video. Did we already read this one actually? Or was there something very similar to it? I actually don't know, but anyways, there is that. Seems very good. And yeah, that was basically all we got from the live stream, which a lot of that, again, we already knew. Some things like if you can use points across characters, I don't think we fully knew yet. And yeah, this is basically what, this is a good image of what you're gonna see in characters' skill trees. There are tons of other perks in the game. Can't wait for them all to be revealed. But yeah, we also get um, some pictures of the perk here for Sissy. Her ability or star sign, I guess, is Bane which of course we already know it's the big poison cloud. And there's different paths for it as well, like down here. This one has a timer above it. I'm guessing it's how long that the smoke cloud stays for. If you want to level up that, the duration of it. We know these two paths right here in the middle increase the time victims are affected by the smoke or by the poison. So the first one makes it to 12 seconds of poison. And then if you upgrade to the second one, it seems like Kind of a waste, I don't know why you wouldn't go on the other sides because it's only an extra 1.5 seconds that they're affected by the poison if you upgrade from the first one to the second one. So maybe going and branching out to a different path is a little better. But yeah, we don't know what the third one is, but I am guessing it has an electric shock icon. I'm guessing you can put poison on generators with this one. And then this one, you could probably put poison on windows or hitchhiker traps. And same with this one, vice versa. That is just my prediction. And then, yeah, they also have attribute points. I think they also have 30 to spend, but they have savagery, blood harvesting, and endurance, not like strength, stealth, and all those other things. And yeah, here's the execution that you get to choose. Your three perks, your ability, all their perks right here. The threes under them mean they're level three. They've played a lot with those perks and leveled them up. And then you get the grandpa ability. Still don't understand um, if two people bring the same grandpa ability, how is that going to work? Is it just going to have a better effect? Just like a level on the um, ability skill tree or the star sign skill tree. Maybe it's going to just have a better effect. Don't know yet. Maybe it just won't allow people to bring in. Maybe you pick the three at the beginning of the match kind of. We don't know that yet. And then they highlight some perks here for the victims and family, which we'll really quickly go over. Rally leader. Some of these we might have already read. When you rally the team by helping other victims, you and your team will recover by being incapacitated faster. We did read that one. Parting gift, when one victim escapes, all family members will be highlighted for the perk holder. Bounce back better. Healing items you use are more effective. And for the family, unrelenting, this increases your endurance. So it's just like base attribute points for endurance. Just like that other perk for stealth. Tracker tagged, hitting a victim will highlight, highlight them for all family members. Also very good for solo queue because, and for just new players in general, because if you hit someone, you're going to call out like, they're up in the, this room, blah, blah, blah. People aren't going to know what that is. There's no ping system. They could, of course, use their family vision to see the other family members through walls. So that's useful. But this will help them come and help you out if you hit somebody. This will also just help you, of course, track them so they can't hide from you. Maybe you hit them right at the end of a well. They drop down and you're going to be able to see them through the floor for a little bit. Exterior alarms when active, all critical doors and gates are highlighted if they're opened. Don't exactly know what critical doors are, but probably doors that lead into the basement, doors that lead out of main buildings into areas where like the generator is, outside areas, maybe. And they go over some ways to get XP, winning a close encounter, turning the generator on, escaping such dismantling traps, healing your teammates. But yeah, that is basically the metagame explained. Um, hopefully I didn't miss too many things. Kind of know exactly how these will work already, but I could touch on those as well. Grandpa perks when you put them on during the game, they'll be offline. Then as you feed grandpa blood, it'll grow his upgrades and you'll unlock the grandpa perks that everybody's using. Don't know how it'll choose which grandpa perks to use first, because depending on how much blood you feed him, it's going to go to the first perk then the second and the third. How, like, if I join a match, can I sometimes be the person that gets lucky and gets the first perk? We just have to feed Grandpa a little bit of blood to get my perk available for the team. Or how will that work? We don't know. Sometimes you can maybe spawn in and be unlucky. You see your perk is in the third slot. You're going to have to feed Grandpa a lot of blood to get up to your perk. And it's a team-wide effect, so it doesn't really matter. But still a lot unexplained. We'll know in 15 days when the game fully releases. 
anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed come back and check out the channel in 15 days when the game is out and yeah we should be having a lot of fun anyways that's it for today i'll see you guys in the next video very very soon